But I am very best. And uh, on uh, Dropbox, uh, it's the same problem. First of all, I have uh, more than two gigabytes uh, here. And uh, the second is also on Dropbox, uh, if everybody tries to, to enter, uh, it complains. So I can give uh, to one of you uh, this pen and uh, you can uh, uh, share uh, on other pens, okay? So who is uh, the responsibility? So you are responsible, it's not mine, it's what I do. So it, you go on your computer or try to install and, or, or pass to another colleague if uh, people that ask the so, up to tomorrow or uh, on Wednesday. So, uh, for people that use their computer, of course, this is uh, okay. For the other, they may try to download, but if they are uh, already with the uh, uh, pen drive, it will be faster. Okay? So, this is for uh, Wednesday. Uh, then, let us finish uh, with uh, conditions. Um, okay, drop <laughs> stage one. Okay, so, um, the, this last uh, example of uh, use of condition is a uh, try broadcast. Uh, how does it work? So we define a, a number of threads, five here to create. And uh, um, we have a condition that we initialize as usual. It's a simple condition with its lock condition and a, a, a simple uh, int uh, as a variable. We create the five threads and then the main thread sleeps five seconds and then locking the condition set to one this variable in the condition structure and does a condition broadcast. Why? Because all the threads are waiting on the same condition. So the simple uh, condition signal would uh, wake up only a single uh, thread. So with the broadcast, uh, we can uh, um, wake up uh, all, the, all the threads that are blocked on the condition. So while not condition met means it's zero, uh, it waits, and uh, when it wake up, it test again the condition and goes on. So, um, this example also show you the template of use of uh, uh, the condition wait with the while rather than with if, because this condition could be different for the five threads. For example, uh, if condition is equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? And uh, so, doing a broadcast, they would uh, recheck with the lock locket, you know, that this operation is done with the lock locket. When uh, this wait uh, ends, so uh, the thread locket rerun again, mm -hmm. It's a run with the lock locker. Okay. So it can test the condition and possibly go to sleep again on this side, on this way. Okay? Well, this terminates uh, so far the, uh, the long history of uh, synchronization and now we can go on. Uh, so, uh, I will divide into part of this uh, uh, lesson. The first part is uh, on file system, and the second part is on uh, booting uh, PC. So something that is related to to 
the laboratory of uh, Wednesday. So you will uh, be exposed, I suppose, to new things. Interesting in my opinion, but that's the thing. Uh, you know. uh, okay, so file system. What is a file system? File system is an organization of data on a mass unit, a disk. Let us call it disk, but can be a CD ROM, a pen drive, or whatever. Um, where uh, we uh, associate a name to some data. Okay? So we access uh, uh, the data through first the file name, but then for efficiency, uh, through the um, file pointer or file descriptor. So this is uh, the logical level. So let me show you first another thing. Maybe it's still uh, more interesting, but uh, I will. Uh, um, okay. Was the uh, slides? Uh, uh, I know. We will uh, go through this uh, other module, but uh, uh, maybe next time. But. Uh, let me show you the Unix kernel architecture here. Okay, so far uh, we we worked on this part, on the right part of uh, of this architecture. What do we have in this slide? On the top we have the user and user application. Okay, dash and the user application means your programs. Uh, what uh, uh, this uh, dotted line uh, uh, indicates is that uh, we have uh, the system and the user on top, user level, and kernel level on bottom. This line okay, cannot be uh, passed normally with normal instruction. Do you uh, ask? service through the system calls, as you know. So, we call directly the system calls, or you can use the system libraries that embed uh, hidden the system calls. When you do printf, as a matter of fact, printf corresponds to write on console or on file, and it ends up to a system call, okay? <coughs> now, Everything for the user goes through the system call interface. And now Unix kernel architecture has two big blocks. One for process control, uh, process control, the process control subsystem, uh, where you have a memory management, memory map, for example, inter-process communication and scheduling of the of all the threads of, of the processes. Um, as a matter of fact, memory management is seen through the file subsystem, subsystem. but let us uh, today uh, concentrate on the left part of this architecture. As you can see here, we arrive at the hardware through uh, several modules but through the file systems. The device drivers are seen through the file system in Unix. Okay? So, there are special files that are, as a matter of fact, devices. For example, the TQI is, uh, uh, is your uh, um, console or screen, so, uh, or a modem or a line printer, Everything is, is seen through the file subsystem. And the file subsystem means system calls. So open, read, and write that you know already closed are system calls offered by the file subsystem. <clears throat> then, if we look uh, in more detail here, 
we see that uh, there are two paths to reach the hardware control. Okay, uh, one that is, goes through the so-called buffer cache. So this is the normal way of uh, accessing your data, your files, okay, your programs. Uh, it means uh, that uh, there is uh, part of the kernel memory that is devoted to uh, keep a, a copy of the blocks of the disk uh, in the same uh, <coughs> same strategy uh, that you know for for cache memory hmm? so we virtualize the disk through uh, a buffer cache uh, but there is also the possibility of direct access to the blocks of the disk. So these two interfaces are called through a block device or through a character device. Okay, character doesn't mean a byte because I can access a disk block through this interface. For example, when you do make file system, of course the file system doesn't exist and you cannot use the buffer cache. When you do file system check or other uh, commands, um, you pass often uh, through this interface. That is, uh, of course, faster, but uh, 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 sometimes it's not possible to use it. Okay, so now uh, we begin uh, to analyze the file system <coughs> and uh, I leave uh, for uh, another lesson the details of this. So this has effect also on another laboratory where we will implement the device driver for character device. Yes. There is different way if we use directly or indirectly. This when when we open a file. When we open a file, normally we go through this. Okay. Ah. It depends on the uh, how your special file slash dev say SDA. Hmm? Uh, this uh, special file may be a character file or a block file. And so the, the interface is different. But you have to wait today. <laughs> okay, so let us uh, uh, go back uh, to the uh, file system. Like this, one of these. Yes, logical there. Um, so, <clears throat> here you see instead um, the um, hierarchical uh, way of uh, accessing uh, the device driver. So, from the user point of view, uh, you typically have uh, several uh, way of uh, accessing a file. 99.999% is through this method, okay, sequential, the typical data, one after the other. Uh, but, in general, you may have uh, uh, rather than simple uh, characters and lines for binary files, you may have uh, the possibility of uh, having records, records uh, uh, that are logical uh, subdivision of the data in a file, so a person has several data, and you can uh, put in a file data in the order of arrival, okay? So you stack with, without any organization. Uh, from the user point of view, you may have in, instead indexed sequential files, so the possibility of reading record the number 1000, okay? That may be useful. Uh, indexed not sequential or hash, so in uh, access through a key rather than uh, through, through a number. 
So this is uh, the logical uh, uh, way uh, of uh, uh, see the data from the user point of view. But from uh, uh, the kernel point of view, it has to manage records that are variable, as I mentioned, okay? So you may have uh, records with uh, different duration, uh, different dimension, or even if the dimension is the same for this record, it may be not aligned to the blocks. Remember that the unit of access to the disk is the block, okay, it's not the byte, not the record, is the block because physically you have the, the tracks on the disk, the tracks is divided into clusters and blocks, okay? So the, uh, the unit of uh, reading or writing is the block. So the kernel has the duty of uh, transforming the uh, logical axis to the physical axis uh, and depending on the structure of the device uh, the characteristics, physical characteristics of the device uh, it uh, must use, for example, a different strategy for example, first pin, first door <coughs> first order, that is a normal way of transferring data, is not uh, um, convenient for, uh, for the disk. Why? Because uh, if you have many uh, processes or thread that uh, want to write on different files, it means that the head of the disk would uh, move a lot. Hmm? Uh, from a, one track to another track. If we have time, we will see that this uh, movement is the, uh, the most expensive because uh, you can increment the, the speed of rotation of a disk, okay? But the movement of the end to go from one track to the other is difficult to, to be reduced because uh, it is a problem of uh, control, of, of very precise control because the, the head is over the track. Uh, it must uh, accelerate to go to the second track, then stop precisely on the second track. So this takes about 8 milliseconds in the, main, in the best disks and it is difficult to be. Yeah. Uh, reduced. Of course, uh, what happens in this case, the kernel uses a strategy that doesn't serve in the arrival order, the request for reading or writing, but uses a strategy for minimizing the head movement. Okay? This way, it serves uh, the request, minimize the average uh, transfer time. Okay? Of course, if you have instead a solid uh, a disk device, uh, the strategy is different. Maybe the strategy is to avoid writing every time on the same blocks because it's known that uh, uh, the, the life of, of, of the uh, blocks in the SSD um, is limited. So it is better to spread uh, instead as much as possible uh, the, the blocks. By the way, uh, the, the, the duty of the file system management is to uh, uh, transform uh, a logical view uh, useful for the user to a physical uh, view, the, the view of, of the kernel. And this is done in a transparent way for the user because independently of the device you always will, will use a read, open, read, write, close and I.O. control. The, these are the, the system codes for the file system. Okay, so, the, yes? Can we, in a 
I'm sure the constraint of the link that you have movement to a certain priority of the data value. Yes, you, you can. No, you, you cannot. Uh, because uh, the, the strategy of management is in the controller of, uh, of the disk or in the kernel. So it doesn't take into account the priority. Okay? So the uh, first element uh, that uh, uh, characterizes the file system is uh, the directory structure that you know very well, so I will not uh, spend uh, time for this. Uh, in this uh, slide instead, uh, we see, uh, okay, the logical, again, uh, blocks uh, that uh, constitute uh, the uh, file system management. So here you have uh, file names, operation, read write, user command, directory management, so the user interface. And that's it's, uh, nice. Uh, here you have the access method, and that make reference to records, something that uh, logically is good for you. Then this is the kernel here that uh, uh, takes into account the block management to be uh, efficient. Uh, so these blocks. Uh, may be kept in memory as far as possible, so the cache, buffer cache, has the same function of the uh, cache memory. When you write a byte, you don't write a byte on disk, of course, because it will be extremely slow. You write on a block in kernel memory. When the kernel has this strategy, keep uh, uh, these blocks as mm, long as possible in memory, okay? So only when it is necessary, it will transfer the, this block on, on this, following the disk scheduling strategy, so with an order that is uh, functional for the speed of the disk, okay? So you understand that uh, uh, this attack complex structure, but uh, the, the key point is that uh, uh, for writing, the write goes on kernel memory, and then sometimes the block is transferred on, on the disk, okay? That's why if you power off your computer, okay, uh, it is possible that the byte system is not consistent because many data are still here in memory, okay? But, again, the kernel uh, is uh, designed so that you can do the file system check and recover almost all uh, information, even in this case. So, the second element, uh, part of the file name directory, uh, the third element is the file descriptor. So, what is always called the reality of the file. The file descriptor is uh, uh, again uh, uh, part of the disk, of the file system, um, that is used for administration of the file. So, in a file uh, descriptor, this is a theory, you have the file type, the file system type, um, the volume, uh, the starting address of a, of a, a file, the size, the owner, and the access right, um, and other administration uh, information uh, regarding to the access time, the modification time, uh, and so on. <coughs> so, uh, what you don't have in the file descriptor is the file name that is in the directory, okay? So, how the, the, the first task of the, of the designer of the file system manager is to um, decide how to allocate uh, on the disk 
de data uh, correspond to a file. Okay, the first idea is to do contiguous allocation, but it has the same problem of uh, contiguous memory allocation for, uh, for programs. So, uh, you have a fragmentation of the space available because uh, you leave uh, uh, holes in the, in the, um, the disk that cannot be filled because your file, your, your new file, new created file is uh, larger than any hole available. So, the second uh, idea is uh, the so-called linked uh, allocation. So, the idea is to separate, uh, um, uh, to spread the disk block uh, on the disk and to have uh, uh, essentially in the directory the uh, indication of the initial block and ending block. <coughs> in this uh, organization, in this example, uh, 9 is the first block here. And uh, uh, the last, uh, say, uh, um, word of this block, you have uh, the link to the next block. Okay, so 16, this goes to 1, goes to 10, 25, and here you have minus 1, so it's the last block. So, and 25 is written here. So that it can, uh, the file can grow uh, easily without uh, following all the links. So, what is bad in this uh, organization? Do you see something that is bad? Sorry? It's about jumps. Jumps? The access time. The access time. No. No. There is something that is uh, so two things that are really bad uh, on this organization. The first one is that you mix in a block user data and administration data. So this number, okay, makes your block not a power over two as far as the data are concerned, okay, because you, uh, you have to use four bytes, for example. Uh, to, to keep uh, the link. And this is not nice to have uh, uh, administration and user data on the same block. And second, what happens if uh, uh, this link uh, is lost because uh, you have a problem with this block? Of course, you cannot reach the rest of the blocks of the, of the file. And since uh, we imagine that also the free list of the block is done in this way, okay? Of course, if there something happens to one block of the free list, the free list uh, is lost, or most of the free list is lost. So, this is not a, a good idea. So, the idea is to separate the um, um, administration information from the user information and uh, there are several ways of doing this uh, and one of the uh, nice way and original way was uh, uh, done with uh, DOS with uh, the final location table <coughs> so um, I didn't mention another problem uh, of uh, the files, file access. Um, if, we, if we do uh, uh, statistics of the file dimension uh, on a file system, whichever, you will see that uh, most of the files are short files, okay? So that uh, stay in a single block. Hmm? because we have some scripts, some short programs, and so on. Okay, so every real uh, file system uh, 
design has to take care also of this uh, uh, important information. So the uh, final location table is a, a smart way of um, solving both the separation of uh, administration and data, a user data, and the um, access to the initial uh, block of a file. So the idea is that the, the directory we have a number that uh, corresponds to the initial block, often the only block of the file. Okay, so we have direct access to the block. And uh, this uh, 217 here, both access to the data on the disk, and uh, is uh, the number of uh, an entry in the file location table. So in this file location table, uh, uh, the entry is the next block index in the file location table. So this goes to uh, 618, it is a block but also uh, an entry in this uh, uh, file location table. The next one is 339 and this goes uh, minus 1 and a 5. Okay, so in this case uh, we don't have, uh, we have all this block for the user data and what is interesting is that we can reserve several uh, blocks of the disk to keep copies of this uh, file location table okay because of this uh, information is compact okay in this way if something of course to the original main file location table, we can recover information from the second copy, third copy, and so on. Uh, the third <laughs> um, organization is uh, the one of uh, uh, Unix, as a matter of fact, yes, in theory, we will see in practice how does work. Again, there is a separation of administration and data. The blocks contain uh, data, hmm? but let me explain. So, um, the directory contains the file name and associate the inode, so the index block hmm? for the file. In our case, the index the inode, but here and the simplified way is the block. What does contain in this block? Not data, but uh, an index block. So this block, has, uh, this file uh, includes one, two, three, four, and five, five blocks. And their uh, index are nine, 16, one, 10, and 25, okay? So, uh, again, uh, there is a separation between uh, uh, administration blocks and uh, data blocks, uh, that is uh, nice. And uh, what uh, is also interesting is that uh, in this organization, um, from the viewpoint of the kernel, the file system manager, there is no distinction between data and administration blocks because when you erase this file, you remove this file, of course all these data blocks go on the free list, but also this one, okay? And so uh, a block on the disk may be used either for data or for indexes okay so there is no distinction what is important is that when uh, you have uh, uh, here uh, uh, an index it must be sure that it points to a block that contains uh, uh, administration information okay so 
um, to go into more details for the uh, Unix file system organization, every file system, when you create a file system with a make fs uh, command, what do we will do uh, next laboratory? Uh, the layout of the blocks on the disk uh, is like this. Uh, you have uh, always a boot, so called boot block, a sector of uh, 512 uh, bytes. Um, even if uh, this file system doesn't contain uh, a kernel, the boot block is always present. The second uh, uh, set of blocks is the so called super block. The super block uh, um, contains all the information related to the current state of, the, of this file system. So, the number of files, the uh, number of blocks, uh, data blocks that are free, the number of uh, I know the uh, nodes that are um, free, and the list or map of this uh, uh, free elements. Uh, as I said, there are data blocks and administration blocks, the I know, the descriptors. The, the blocks that contains all the uh, true information related to the data because the name can change. Hmm? So the information about the owner, uh, uh, the list of uh, uh, index to reach the data and so on. Okay, and so this is uh, synthesized here. Um, this uh, slide. Uh, the inode is uh, the descriptor. It contains uh, information about the owner, the file type, if it is uh, a regular file, directory, or a special file. Uh, this can be seen uh, uh, using ls minus l. On the first byte, you will uh, read. Uh, uh, D for directory, nothing minus for regular files, and uh, you can read uh, C or B for device files, special files, okay? And P for pipes. <laughs> okay, by the way, access rights, read only rights, executable, etc. Uh, access times, last time it was uh, uh, accessed, modified. And the time where the inode was uh, modified. Link number. What is this link number? You should know. What is the link number? So the link number uh, counts the number of uh, names that uh, uh, points to this file descriptor. So I said that the uh, descriptor is the reality of the file. Um, many names may point to this specific descriptor or I know. Okay. So I can create through the ln uh, commands in the bash or the link <coughs> I can call a uh, shortcut. Uh, different name that points to the same uh, inode. Why this link number is important? In order to free the node, maybe. <coughs> yes, in order to uh, free the data in the inode when, when the link count becomes zero, because there is no way, no names, for accessing this data, okay? At this point, uh, it's, it is uh, <laughs> better to, uh, to recover all the blocks related to this real file. File size and table 
of data block addressed on the disk. Table means, as a matter of fact, index blocks. Mm? Because the organization is the last one that uh, I showed. I have an example. Uh, owner, my thesis uh, student, group, uh, uh, my group, regular file, access right, uh, read right, uh, execute for the owner, for the group, and for the rest of the world. Um, then uh, access. Uh, say this one modified uh, and 22 uh, and uh, the i node you see has been modified uh, later than so i can modify the i node without touching <coughs> the file the data why i can change uh, for example an access right or the owner okay so these are two different information uh, size and uh, we will see in the Unix uh, file system the uh, information about uh, uh, the data uh, blocks uh, is structured in, by means of 13 or 15 pointers uh, with a uh, a particular structure, structure that I will show you in a moment. Um, so, um, what I uh, illustrated so far is the inode on disk. Remember that uh, the duty of uh, the file system manager is to keep uh, in memory to virtualize the access to disk in memory. So, when you open a file, okay, a copy in memory of the inode is done, okay, and uh, uh, with additional information, uh, number, inode state assigned or free, because uh, in, uh, to be efficient, uh, uh, kernel copies a set of inodes, of free inodes in memory. Mm -hmm. uh, so that when you need to create a new file, I immediately find in memory a free inode uh, without searching on the disk. So, the information if the inode has been modified in memory, because it must be uh, updated on disk. And if it is a mount point, so mount point uh, uh, is important uh, because uh, you can mount a new file system on a directory of an existing file system. So you have your normal file system on the disk. When you uh, put your pen drive mm -hmm. automatically, but you can mount also uh, by end, uh, you can mount uh, this file system uh, into um, a directory of the existing file system. Then the two file system will be combined and you can pass to this mount point. The mount point is an important information because uh, the kernel must know when we pass through this mount point, the read and write operation change. They don't change for the user because you read in the same way from uh, the pen drive or from the disk. But of course, the, the underlying uh, read and write are different. And same when you go back, simply doing, uh, say, cd dot dot. Hmm? Uh, logical device counter of the system. A reference count. What is the reference count? Uh, the reference count is different from the link count. So remember, the link count uh, is the number of names hmm, from which I can reach uh, the data. The reference count instead 
is uh, the number of open operations that have been done on that file. I mean, on that descriptor. So I can open F1 in this directory and F2 in another directory, maybe two different processes, but F1 and F2 maybe refer to the same descriptor, and so the reference count is two, okay? Also, if we have many friends, sure, sure. Unless they uh, they share the the the, the file folder. So the open operation. I said the open operation. No, not uh, if you share the pointer. Uh, the pointer is there. The pointer of the descriptor. Uh, pointer to other rhinos to manage the, the listing memory. Now, it's okay. Now, uh, the low level uh, functions that uh, the kernel uh, system management uses um, <coughs> that are not seen by the user. At the lowest level, you have the management of blocks into the buffer cache. Um, that we will see maybe next time. Um, to uh, read a byte, a single byte, the first byte of, uh, of your file, when you do, say, get C, hmm? uh, you need a block in the buffer cache. And this is managed by the function, internal function, get block. This get block uh, typically look at the, looks at the buffer cache to see if uh, the block is already there, hmm? or simply copies the block on the kernel memory hmm? in the buffer cache. So that the next operation, typically sequential, will find the second byte in memory. Okay? Uh, then, uh, block read uh, reads from, uh, uh, from the allocated block, uh, <coughs> and block read ahead is uh, still uh, uh, a more sophisticated uh, way of uh, managing these uh, buffers. When the kernel understands, and this, this is easy, uh, that uh, process is doing a sequential read, okay, to optimize the transfer time, uh, reads the block in the buffer cache, but not only. Uh, it prepares a second block with the block read ahead. So reading in advance, a block that is not needed, needed immediately, okay? When this uh, block will, uh, will be needed, okay, it reads ahead uh, the new one, and so on. So, for the block write instead, as I said, uh, the, um, these functions uh, uh, this function does uh, write up on a block in buffer cache um, and marks this block as uh, written, okay? Delayed write. Um, when this block is written on the disk really? It is uh, written only when uh, um, the get block doesn't find a free block. So, depending on a strategy that typically is LRU, least recently used, if the block is marked delayed right, the kernel uh, gives the command to write on the disk. 
Okay, so this cannot be used for a, as a free flow. This is done asynchronous. Uh, then the kernel goes to the next block. So this block uh, uh, is uh, um, is uh, modified. No, well I can uh, take this block for the new data. Okay. Um, the strategy is to keep the list so that uh, the most recently used block goes at the end, okay? And uh, the most recent, the least recently used is on, uh, uh, on the head of this list. Okay, all the functions related to the file system, as a matter of fact, use the buffer cache. So use this function. Uh, so which are these uh, still low level functions? Are the I not get, I not put, so when I need when I need a, a new I not, when I create a file. When I do a I put, when I uh, erase, erase or remove a file. BMAP. BMAP is the function that uh, uh, is used by NameI. NameI maps the name to its corresponding idol using BMAP. BMAP is able to uh, map a logical offset to a physical offset in a block. Okay? So say offset uh, 100,000 in which block is, this is done by uh, BMAP. Then here, a lock for allocating new data blocks. Okay? A free to remove, I alloc to allocate a new, uh, sorry, I was wrong here. I, I unlock uh, to allocate uh, and I free to, to remove uh, the, the nodes. Uh, I get and uh, I put this for open and close. Okay? When you close, uh, you put, uh, and when you open, uh, you, I get uh, the descriptor. <coughs> so if the descriptor stays, stays on the disk uh, until uh, you do I free. Okay, so here you have the description of uh, the, uh, this function, high-level uh, description. Um, um, the I get is called by the system called open. It locks the node, uh, allocates in memory, according to the node descriptor, and returns uh, uh, the I know the unlocked with a reference count incremented by one. So every time you do open, the reference count is incremented by one. Um, if the I know the free list is empty, the card returns an error. Okay? So it cannot wait. This is uh, the structure of, of uh, the 13 pointers that I mentioned before in the I know the description. So you see that uh, the first nine, ten, sorry, uh, I know them, point directly to data blocks. So suppose that uh, these uh, blocks are uh, one kilobyte. So for file, uh, files that have uh, uh, less than 10 kilobytes, you have a direct access to the data block, <coughs> to their data blocks, because with uh, the I get, this I know the information is uh, uh, loaded in memory, kernel memory, and then you have here the index of uh, the data blocks corresponding to that descriptor to that file. If the file grows uh, or is already greater than uh, 
10 kilobytes in, in my example. Um, the, um, the pointer number 10, the letter uh, index here, doesn't point directly to data, a data block, but it's a, a single indirect uh, index. It means uh, that uh, it points to an index block. Okay? So, since uh, you have, uh, say, one kilobyte again, a block here, you divide by four, and you have 256 access to another 256 data blocks. Okay? If this is not enough, you use uh, the uh, 12 uh, index here that the cat that knows is a double indirect index. So it points to an index block that doesn't point to data blocks but to another index block. So you have 256 square uh, data blocks. Finally, if your uh, uh, file needs uh, gigabytes, you may have a file for the indirect. So, for which the data block, uh, you know that uh, initially you must access three index blocks. Of course, this structure would be, uh, say, mm, ineffective for long files and uh, as a, a rule in general it is better not to have uh, uh, big files but uh, you must remember that there is no distinction between data blocks and administration blocks this index block it means that the buffer cache is also used for this blocks. Okay? So, to access this data, okay, the first time you access this block, it takes some time because uh, the head has to uh, move to search this index, this index, and this index on, the, on three different blocks. But then we have uh, all this information in memory. Okay, so remember this, okay, this is uh, even here. Input is uh, used by the system called close. When we close a file, the uh, inode in memory is released. Um, of course, it decrements the reference count by one. Uh, and if the reference count is zero, right, the I know don't expect it if uh, it is modified. Um, now, this is the, the strange part, the interesting part. Notice. The last sentence. If the reference count is zero and the link count is zero, the kernel release all the data blocks belonging to this uh, descriptor. What does it mean? If the condition, this condition, is not satisfied, okay? What, uh, it means that the reference count is greater than zero. Hmm? What does it mean? That some process has opened the file and keeps the file descriptor. The kernel doesn't release the data blocks. Okay? So if a file, a, a file is in yours, by uh, one or more processes. Even if uh, the link count is zero, mm -hmm. the uh, 
the kernel doesn't remove the data. How it is possible that the file uh, is in use but the link count is still? We have a copy on the cache or somewhere else. No, no, no. No. The Is, uh, done so when you do remove remove uh, F1 uh, the system call that is used by the bash to obtain this result this remove of the F1 is unlink unlink F1 okay the unlink system call uh, remove what does unlink remove from the current directory in this case The current directory, uh, the, asso the association F1 with the PIO, it removes this information from the current directory. Okay? But if before unlink, this process, not, not this, your process does open F, F file description, it will open. Uh, FFF and uh, open read only. Of course, if FFF is the current directory, it will uh, uh, receive uh, a number, it's correct. Okay? And uh, you know that the file descriptor points exactly to the descriptor of uh, the reality of this file. Then, if it does unlink FFF, you see that uh, this, uh, this uh, process can uh, read from FD. Okay? Do whatever it wants uh, with uh, FD. So, the link count, the reference count, has been incremented by one, the link count has been decremented by one. Okay, and if this is the, uh, the only open that has been done on this file, the link count is zero. Okay, so suppose that no other process has uh, opened the file, so this moment the link count is zero. So this is the way of creating temporary files because uh, a process uh, open the file or create so create the file and obtain the file descriptor and immediately unlink it so that no other process may uh, access this file because uh, the name doesn't exist in the directory okay but it, this process can use the file uh, descriptor to, to work on this file when it does close finally so read uh, to do whatever it wants when it does close at this point the reference count is zero the link count is zero and the data data of FFF are removed. <coughs> so what is strange is that it's not a link that removes data, but close. Okay? Why? Because uh, uh, 
this trick we are able to create temporal files. It means, for example, GCC creates several temporary files uh, <coughs> in a slash TMP directory. Uh, to keep uh, intermediate uh, steps of uh, compilation, uh, but no one uh, can see this file because it immediately uh, removes it. Then, but it uses because as the file descriptor. Okay. BMAP, as I said, uh, returns uh, the pointer to the disk block uh, uh, mapping a logical offset to the physical uh, block and offset. And so this uh, yeah, node, uh, uh, again with uh, some tricks here, um, that shows you how to reach uh, some data blocks. Here you see that uh, uh, this is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's uh, a direct index. Okay, so here you have a, a direct index. So this is a block data. Uh, then instead here, uh, we know that this is a double, the double, this is a triple. So this is a double in the indirect, so it points to uh, an index block. For example, you have a 331, and you look uh, at the block 331, and uh, at this entry, you get the data block 333. <coughs> so what does it mean? that the map takes uh, my number, I suppose uh, one million, uh, and does all the counts here to understand if uh, uh, it can use a target block, no. It can use a, a target, and the target, uh, how many entries it needs, uh, where to put uh, the, the corresponding entry, and so on. So why, why I said that uh, there's something strange in this uh, uh, I know. Do you see something that is strange on the I know itself? So, what does it mean, the first zero? using uh, the FSIC, uh, so we moved the offset to write uh, all the other data. To save disk blocks that are empty, uh, the Unix uh, put zero on uh, the empty correspondence to blocks that have not been written, so they logically contain zero or null, <laughs> if you consider them as uh, characters. So if I do F6, uh, say one million, okay, I will have a lot of zeros, and then uh, the entry corresponding to maybe uh, uh, an index block that points data block and so on. Okay, so remember that uh, uh, if you use fseq and write and you do uh, command uh, 
EF, EF is a disk uh, frequency, so it gives you the occupation of the disk in blocks. Uh, before and after running the program, suppose you have uh, uh, written a program that does F disk on 100 million offset. Okay? Of course, it will not allocate the number of blocks corresponding to 100 million divided by size of, uh, of the block, but just three or four blocks, okay? The one, the, these ones. So if you write a single byte here, it will uh, occupy maybe two or three blocks. Nehemiah uh, returns the inode of a file given its uh, path, uh, path name, it seems uh, trivial, okay? It's not at all trivial, that's why we use open, because uh, these are the steps for uh, uh, resolving path name uh, dot dot slash ad. What does it mean that we are looking at file B that is located the, the parent uh, directory of the current directory, then subdirectory A. Uh, let us see how many blocks are read uh, for resolving this. Um, okay, current directory is the dot I know. Okay, this is the current directory. This information is kept in the so called user area of the kernel. Uh, so, this is uh, uh, the block that contains uh, the inode. And then the second step here is to, uh, to go on the uh, dot dot inode, so in another inode. Then you look for the existence of the A directory of this directory. Directory is a data block. You cannot edit it, but it contains the, the association of names and inodes. So we have to look at the parent node, there is the A directory. If it exists, we must go on the A I note. Ah, yeah. Uh, why? Because we have to uh, search for file B. Namely, so we go down again and uh, uh, we go on the directory B. Okay, so as a matter of fact, you have to read uh, the blocks um, corresponding to the descriptors and the blocks corresponding to the data I notes and uh, files for the slash uh, the dot dot slash uh, for A and for D and the current I know and for uh, files uh, you have to read uh, the content uh, the, the file D the current directory the file directory so if you have a long uh, path name, slash, uh, from, from the root, you have to do a lot of uh, uh, block access. That's why you do the open, uh, because after all this stuff, you have finally the inode in memory. Okay, the inode is the information that contains all the information that you need about uh, your file. Okay. Not only the pointer, but also the other information. <coughs> so, um, that's uh, the value of the current direct directory. Mm -hmm. Because you typically create uh, uh, mm, files uh, on the current directory, it will be uh, expensive uh, to, to give uh, for the kernel to start always from the root. Mm. So it keeps the current directory. Okay. 
So you can stop. Yes. And uh, then continue with uh, the other topic.